Hello and welcome everybody. Time for an Amulet stream. We're gonna be trying out... This is the, the list that I have liked the best uh, lately. So I have been super happy with the main deck. Having access to 34 lands, including 4 castles, 5 basic lands, and uh, 4 turn timbers has been uh, very, very solid for me. So we're gonna continue doing this. Uh, of course, the only potential change would be to add a breeding pool instead of the basic forest, but I have kind of liked the basic forest so far. Um, so I'm going to probably continue to do the same thing. Uh, we have no non-green cards. Every card is either a colorless card uh, or a dismember or green, you know? <laughs> so um, the only blue cards, quote unquote, is the activation of Tolera West, which is uh, at this point, it's kind of limited to just uh, being able to, you know, use your Simicrose Chamber in order to, to get the mana. It hasn't come up uh, yet that I have struggled to activate it after resolving a Titan, which is very often when you want to be uh, when you want to be activated it, and um, even still you can often you know Dryad fixes your mana, and then you can often with an Amulet plus Azusa you can manage to get double blue. So there's always work uh, workarounds if you want to use the Lurie West. Uh, the only situation that could come up would be like uh, wanting to transmit for like a Cavern of Souls against something like like the control decks or something like that so barring that uh, i have i have liked this uh, shell very very much and the other basic uh, does help a lot in matchups like uh, death and taxes or stuff like that where um th that extra land uh, really matters and also having access to green sources under blood moon also has come up so i have been liking this uh, this setup a lot as far as the cyber goes, we have the extra copy of Field of the Dead, three Relic of Prodigious. I think that I think the Relic is right now probably the best it's ever in because not only does it answer the number one control deck in the format in the Uro deck, uh, but also it answers um, the w one of the best combo decks in the format as well in um, in the Upso Spells deck. Uh, Dredge also is making a little bit of a comeback because. I don't know if Dredge is making a comeback or Solek is making a comeback or something, but it, he's been like top aiding every single weekend's uh, challenge. And I think the last time he did so was with Dredge. So, you know, having the extra relics in there doesn't hurt either. Uh, three dismembers is kind of like the stock in the current metagame, I think. Dismember answering uh, all the uh, stuff from the Heliod combo deck. Answering stuff from uh, in the mirror as well, uh, stuff like even mind sensor, all that sorts of nonsense uh, gets uh, tagged very cleanly by this member. Um, Ramen Excavator is a card that I've been willing to try, and I didn't. I don't think I tried it in my in my previous deck list, but I think that Excavator is actually in, in fine in fine spots right now because of all the cards that. Um, kind of incidentally destroy your lands, uh, like if, um, wildfires and stuff like that. So um, basically it feels like Excavator does the thing the tracker used to do before, except it does it better. The only thing it doesn't do, obviously, is represent like an actual threat under a blood moon, which tracker actually does. Uh, but meh, you know, whatever. Uh, one Rex Sage, one Force, obviously, a couple of Baylots and a couple of Explosives. And I am playing today a cozy like butcher, butcher of truth, butcher, butcher, whatever. <laughs> I'm playing a cozy like um, because I last time I streamed amulet, I think I ran into mill four times in three leagues. So I'm done. I'm done losing to that stupid fucking deck. We are devoting the cyber slot to it. It's over, mill players. It is over. The reason I'm playing Coastal Lake is I think that... Um, <laughs> 29 months. What are we gonna name our Twitch baby? Mm, it's a good question. We could name the Twitch baby Nymph. Mid hat friend. What's mid hat? Is, is, is it because of this? Is that good now? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I just put on the head and it just it just falls however it falls, you know? Uh, so I was talking about Kosilek. Um Oh yeah, against the... 
against the Heliod deck, we can use Co-Select to actually not deck. That's what I was thinking. I, I tune in and first thing I hear is that stupid fucking deck. I know I'm in the right stream. Oh yeah, for sure. Muldrota. <laughs> had from and no had friends. So we have to, okay, if that's fair enough. One moment, we went in yesterday against Mill without a hate card and Cyborg felt so good. That's like the dream right there. How many hats are in my collection? I think three. <laughs> that's a lot, four, four, four. So I have, I have this hat, which is my streaming hat. Then I have my playing gigs hat, which is kind of like a French one. Um, let's see if I have a picture of my playing gigs hat. Do I have a picture of my playing gigs hat? I might not have a picture of it, actually. Dan Francisco with a tier one sub. 22 months. 22 months of support. Thank you so much, Dan. And thank you so much for this hand deck. I mean, it's not insane, but it's it's pretty cool. It's a fine hand. Have the white hat for when you splash white in amulet. Uh oh, mirror match. Pseudo mirror, green white reclaimer maybe. We do have the Dryad though. We are gonna have turn three Dryad, turn four Titan. And with my opponent leading on turn one Balakin, unless they're playing Amulet and they have an Amulet, I don't think they're gonna be able to keep up with this. Um... It could be the blue-green control deck. It's not, okay. So it is just... Is my opponent just playing, like, Titan Shift? No, they're not playing Titan Shift. They're playing a real deck. Damn it, opponent. Why would you play a real deck instead of playing silly Titan Shift? If I find it on top land, I think I'm gonna play Dryad and haste it because that means that it's only five triggers instead of six. Might matter. So if my droid doesn't die, my opponent's dead. <clears throat> so they have one turn to find an answer to the dryad. Yeah, my opponent is actually playing Titan Shift. What are you doing, opponent? Yeah, for one red mana at instance be the main deck. This member is the only thing that would answer this. There's no way they have this member though. Here's Titan. Yeah. Opponent is a renaissance man or woman, yeah exactly. Opponent's living in the past. Um, opponent is indeed a renaissance folk. I guess we're on the draw, so ramming up is not really going to be uh, an effective plan. I do want Sage to answer opposing Dryads, same thing with Force Vigor. We probably have to watch out for Boil. So 
So does Boyle make me want to play this member is the question. I don't think it does. What's up, house? Beat Freed Mania in the mirror match on my first game of Amulet because I was smart enough to win the die roll. Oh yeah. Good play. Good line, Muldrota. Yeah, I know. Sure. So this is turn to explore turn to Dryad with the potential of turn four Titan. We need a bounce land, a castle, or an amulet. Seems good enough to me. No second land. <laughs> Interesting strategy for your ramp deck. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess that they just F6 through their turn. Yikes. All right, I don't think my opponent was winning anyway. They lost that matchup in deck's con deck con construction. I've played against at least one else player every week for the last month. That is one too many. That is definitely one too many. But leagues be leagues. I mean, we just played against Scapeshift in December of 2020. December 14th of 2020, and we just played against Scapeshift. Like red green Scapeshift. At this point, it's probably it's it's possible it's been years since that deck was playable. Actual years. Sure, let's keep this in. People still play slivers? Yeah, but... Oh, please tell me I'm playing against Scapeshift again. <laughs> uh, but like slivers is kind of like fun, meme -y, you know? So th there's like actual reasons to play that deck. It's... Well, it's fun and meme -y. so, like, it's kind of cool, right? Um, but, like, what's your reason for playing Skip Shift? Like, it, you cannot tell me that that deck is fun. So, at that point, why are you playing it, you know? And Merfolk, you can even tell me, oh, well, my name is Nikachu, so, yeah, I'm playing Merfolk. And I will be like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes sense, that makes sense. Uh, but, like... Low at Colin's Cape Shift Fund. I think I'm just developing mana here. You can explore. Play another amulet. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, but you were not playing Scape Shift when you went 12 and 3 on a GP. You were playing Breach Titan, which is better than Scape Shift, because it's faster. So, like, there's a reason to play Breach Titan. Still unclear what my opponent's doing out there. They're probably casting Cryptic Command. Oh. This must be the Canister deck, that's what it is. Canister has been playing like a blue-green uh, blue control deck. So I imagine that's what we got going on here. Here's the Dryad. And if they have a fetch land, I'm gonna be very sad. Yoshua the Betrayed, they have a fetch land. I am going to be very sad. With the Prime Sub for the third month in a row. Having played match matching since COVID, but Devil it always manages to suck me back in. Just when I thought I was out, they reel me back in. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I mean, I think we just got a yellow here. Like, there's not much of a thing that we can do. We're gonna get remanded, but... That's even worse. And I forgot I drew my second amulet, so that was a terrible play. <laughs> I totally forgot that I had a second amulet. Yep, I I could have played I could have played around Romand either. Also, like I I on I legit just forgot that I pl I drew a second amulet of the explorer last turn. Like I was I was talking to chat and I totally forgot. So that one's on me, chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, not only I could have played around it, but I also should have, and I also would have won the game if I would have. <laughs> so all of those. Also, my opponent's throwing hard out there. They're throwing the game hard. Like they could have killed my dryad, and I would have no business winning this game. Thanks, Yoshua. Thanks. When when what costs me the game is your beautiful comment, I'm not even mad about it, you know? But yeah, I told I totally blanked. <laughs> I, I literally just spaced out. <laughs> I guess it happens. So here comes Udo. Now they decide to kill my dread. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. That was just a mistake from them. Completely threw this one in the garbage. Just grabbed it. Throw it in the garbage. I should definitely cycle Waterlock Grove. Honestly, my opponent's sequencing has been pretty heinous this game. They should have started the turn by cycling Waterlock Grove. If they if they had found the second Valakut off the top, they just straight up win the game. If they had found a Titan, they would have won the game. Oh, I guess they already have a Titan. Then what are you doing? Like saving the fetch lands for us that you have the second Valakut is so much better. Oh, turn timber. <laughs> uh nine nine Uro, no <laughs> I mean we actually have a shot now. Titan? That's a dry that doesn't do it. But we actually did have a shot there. Even after I threw the game away like an idiot. Um we like this, we like relics. And I think I like some number of these members. Excavator is interesting. I think I'm gonna go with it. Uh, I, I, mm. How do I feel about Excavator? Hmm. Excavator is actually kind of weird. Yeah, I guess I don't like it. I actually don't think I care too much about relics. Uh, they do have Mystic Sanctuary though. We have Bog. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this. But I, I want to be as proactive as I can on the play, I think. All right, I swear I'm gonna pay attention this time around. I'm not gonna throw a one game in the garbage just like that. My opponent's gonna have either gusts though, which are gonna be very annoying. Uh, ship that and keep this. The 
Okay, talk to me. Give me more lands. Could I please have some lands, Mr. Deck? Thank you. Thank you dearly. Um, I guess I could have... Yeah, I, I got punished. I should have played this Naming Dryad, actually. Because my opponent showed me both Remand and what's his name, so I'm just going to name Dryad here. So, we got also, we got super punished because I didn't hold the the bounce land in hand. See what my opponents got over there. Nothing is what they got. Whole bunch of nothing. So um, no creature permanent double feet owner's library. Search a layer for a creature. Uh, I actually do want my opponent to counter this or gust this or do whatever they want with this, but. Counter bounce my semi growth chamber. That would be great. Sure. So wasted draw step, so I have to imagine that my opponent has something. Because they could have just like drawn a card there, right? So I have to imagine that they're like there's a there's a reason for them to make that play. Partic like yeah, I don't know. Like my opponent must be new to the deck because they are just they're not playing well. <laughs> they're not playing well at all. To be fair, I'm not playing well either, so... Am I supposed to play this right? It feel I feel like I'm yeah, I guess I'm supposed to do it. So my opponent uses triggers here. I supposed to in my face. If they have a Titan we lose, but No, my opponent's playing like a blue green control deck, similar to what we played last week. Similar to what we played last week, except that it's not playing, um, it's not playing Reclaimer, it's just playing blue and green cards. So it's probably better. <laughs> Am I liking Amulet or Green White Reclaimer better? I think Green White is better right now. It does have a couple of unwinnable matchups, which, you know, kind of sucks a little bit, but I, st I still think that overall the deck is better against the current decks by enough that it's worth it. kind of nonsense is this? I don't know. People people be mad, you know? People be crazy. So they have a cryptic command on top of their deck. 
which they can cycle into thanks to Waterloo Groove. Or maybe they have a new row. It seems like they have a new row. Beast within my land. Hashtag sequencing. I say that because like my, my opponent can't attack now. So <laughs> they missed out on four damage for literally no upside whatsoever. I guess on two damage, but two damage and a zombie. Yeah, my opponent seems to be kind of new. Probably they're new to the deck or something. And here we jam because my opponent is drawing a cryptic command next turn. So it's not like we have too much of an option. Here's Johnny. Okay, we have played our land for turn. So since we have played our land for turn, we played our land for turn. My opponent's going to draw a cryptic command. They're probably going to cycle an end step. Make six mana. It just doesn't do it. So we just haste. We can get gusted here, but can't play our own gust. Never could and never will. Get in there, primetime boy. Get in there, primetime boy. So we have a couple of options here. My opponent has cryptic command in hand. I mean, he's gonna have cryptic command next turn. So we already made our land drop. So we can get double field here. Because they don't have a land, otherwise they would have played it. So we just have to dodge one draw step. GQ for field. Their field doesn't matter. Their Valakut matters more, but I think that having more land, uh, having zombies ourselves is probably gonna be more important. That's the way that we stop their stuff. Uh, we could have gone for field plus ghost quarter, the Valakut. That would have been the other option. Actually, that might have been the better line, now that I think about it. And this beast should have served. The problem now, obviously, is that we need something. Because now my opponent cryptic taps and draws. And we get kind of owned. Yeah, they should have put either Gust on a land long on a land long time ago, right? Uh, getting a fetch line would have also been interesting. I didn't play this game well, to be honest and neither did my opponent, but I was more punished by it. I mean, it was all about that turn where I played my land and I didn't like give myself the out of top decking exactly amulet. Because if I had done that, we would have won very easily. Okay. Yeah, I, I played like shit there. I deserve to lose. Mm -mm. 
So someone play a land in Reclaimer that ETB gives a creature protection and uses Reclaimer fetch to save itself. What do you think of this land? I think it's not playable. The downside is just too, it's just too much. Hey Steve, stop, how's it going? So it, it ended up not mattering what I got. I think that either the options were to get field or to get uh, to get double field or to get field go squatter. Um, but we could not beat Cryptic into Titan. That was just not, not something that our our hand could beat. We could have beaten it if we had played differently, I think, but so I think this is a keep. It's a little bit on the slow side, but we get to like we have guaranteed Titan and we also have Radiant Fountain to buy a little bit of time. Guaranteed turn for Titan. So as long as we don't die on turn three. I guess we could get Thoughtseize to bunch. Probably we're fine if we get Thoughtseize to bunch. At least we're fine if we get Thoughtseize once. Getting Thoughtseize once should not be an issue. Okay, so how do I want to sequence my land drops? This is going to be important. One, two, three, four. Okay, Inquisition is going to take my Dryad. So I guess that doesn't matter too much anymore. Because I was trying to make sure that I can, you know, um, get a trigger on the way out. But now that my Dryad is going to, it's going to, wait, what? They have another Discord spell? They do. Okay. Okay. I guess my Dryad's not going to be taken. Oh, it is. Wait, what? Weird. Okay. It's going to be a slow, slow trip all the way up. I'm not too concerned so far. Until they play like a... Yeah, okay, this is fine. Because this gives me time, which is exactly what I need. My goal here, of course, is to try to keep the Discourge as small as possible. All right, opponent, can you find another Thought Seast before this Titan comes down? Because that's basically all it's going to come down to. They do have Thought Seast. Okay. Triple Discord spell draw is going to be tough for us to beat. Do you like the 4 turn tumor in Amulet or do you think 3 is sufficient? Uh, I like 4, that's why I'm playing 4. But I do think that 3 is, is the good it's a good number. Like you don't need to play all full 4. Like I am making some deck building concessions to play 4, right? Alright. So they have one turn to kill this Dryad, otherwise this Dryad just takes over. Which is nice. Whatever they do, I'm not gonna block. Okay, they have a push. Jenny Tolls with a tier 1 sub, coming back for 26 months. Thank you so much for all of those. What is that? Oh, oh above two years? More than two years? That's that's so long, Jenny. Thank you so much for the continued support. Really appreciate it.
mean, if I'm gonna draw a card, that's a good one to draw. Um, so I don't think we can beat TBR. So we're not gonna play around it. Yeah, I don't think we can beat TBR. So, I guess we're just gonna do this. Mm, I guess I could have tapped differently. If I had played this instead. So this sets up lethal for next turn. My opponent can trade with this Titan if they want to. They probably should. Unless they have the TBR in hand, in which case we just lose. But um, if they don't have the TBR, they probably should trade with this Titan. Okay, so I guess they have it. Why do I tap the Valkyrie? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I could have played... Uh, if I had played differently, I could have... Instead of playing the uh, the Cavern for a turn, I could have played the Simic Growth Chamber. But that just makes uh, triggering a little bit more complicated, right? That just makes triggering uh, field a little bit more complicated there. Yeah, so we died to Bolt. Could have gotten a fetch line instead of drawing a Tolaria West, but if I do that, like my opponent just blocks and I have nothing and they can just like recast the shadow. So I don't think, like, I think that this is like the best, this is the play that gives me the best chance of winning. Is my opponent gonna still got had all these one? Yeah, they're gonna still had all these me. Ha, I don't think that I didn't have you already. Because I also had this call against command. And I was gonna get you with it. You couldn't hear it. You couldn't hear it, but... The... How did I miss two zombies? I didn't miss zombies. In fact, if I had gone for the Simic Growth Chamber, it would have been even harder for me to make zombies, which was the point. Or did I have enough lands and I miscounted? Because you have to think like, do we have six lands, six different names in play? Because yeah, if we had if we had had six different names, then it would have been correct to do that. So I would have played Simic Growth Chamber. So maybe I just miscounted. Oh, thank you, Stubbs. I do need some love. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But did did we have enough lands? I think I counted that we were missing one land. I might have miscounted. It, it's it's quite possible that I might have miscounted. I feel like I'm playing very quickly today, and there's no need for me to. I should probably slow down. This hand looks great though. Hey, Scott, thank you for the cheer. I kind of want to play out the turn T-Bear on turn one. Just so I can. My opponent doesn't reveal Lurus. Oh, that's right. They have the... Uh, I forget about their Blood Moon Cyborg plan. Damn it. I totally forget that they're playing Blood Moon now. Okay, I guess we're gonna just gonna have to E them away. That's awkward. So if I play the turn timber, this means that my opponent can thought seize my land. Which in this hand sounds kind of necessary. Yeah. 
It's so strange to me that this deck has moved on to a Blood Moon Cyber plan when the Blood Moon is just like so bad for them, like in terms of denying them to enact their game plan. So we play Simic Growth here. So now next turn I can draw it into Explore. It's kind of weird to me that they're, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but. Never not have it. Eat a multi BM on Shadow. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a good idea to mold the Blood Moon. Nice. I think I'm actually gonna Rot Farm here to balance the turn timber. It's bad if they have Blood Moon this turn, but like, if they have blood on this turn, it's just bad for me regardless. Like, I, I have no way to realistically play around that. It locks them out if they have blood moon, though, which is really funny. But now I can turn Timber potentially into a Titan. How have I been lately? How is quarantine life for me? Uh, I mean, it's just like, just like it is for everybody else. Just trying to to make things work out. It's not too not too much way around it. Trying to do best with what we got. And spin the wheel. Easy. So let's do Valakid Field of the Dead. This is what gives me the best put uh, the best top decks from now on. Because I have double dried in hand. This card is so good. Oh last Ram como va? They're not fetching basic swamps. Yeah, they're not, but like I don't know. I don't know what that really means. But like now they are SOL, right? They could have like feed the swarm. And then at that point, spells are good draws for me. And because they're going down to three, so spells are good draws for me. And lands are also lethal, so. There's the feed the swarm, they go down to one. And now if I draw land, I win. If I draw a spell, I also kind of just win. Easy. Pew! It's an interesting card. Uh, okay, so we need Rex Sage. I think I'm gonna bring in Rex Sage, but not Force of Vigor. Killing Bowmat is kind of interesting, actually. Killing Bowmat is kind of interesting. By the way, incredible showing for Explore that game, right? Like, I just explored into explored into explored into explored, and then I just kind of like completely um, managed to ramp hard while my opponent just couldn't keep up with that because it just doesn't cost me a land. Feel like if you don't draw amulet, the game plans that you literally just saw me winning without amulet. Uh, yeah, this hand seems okay. I think you win more without amulet than you do with amulet. I mean, I guess not more, but you do about the same. 
you do win about the same with both. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna get, just gonna fetch four. But with my opponent having a Swift Spear, I think I have to do this. It's not even clear that Amulet is that much better than Gracer right here, actually. In fact, it might be, like my opponent showed me K Command game one, so it's possible that Gracer is just actually better than Amulet here. Is John Timber good in green white? Uh, you, I think that in green white you just have better cards to be playing. The beauty about turn timber and amulet is that, as you just saw in this in this game that I just played, like I played the turn timber as a land earlier in the game, and we play such a large concentration of, of bounce lands that you just like bounce it at some point when it's convenient for you, and you actually um, you get a free a free shot at a titan. That's what I'm what I'm gonna do here as well right now. Um, you don't really have that luxury too much in Reclaimer because you have like the one Bounce Land and I guess the one Vesuva, but you have like, you should often have other uses for that one Vesuva. All right. That's a lot of Swiss Spears. Can I draw an Explosives? That would be great. Thank you. It's not bad. Not a bad draw there. Just register for the NRG this weekend. Nice. So we're not too far away. Nice. We're not too far away from triggering this field of the dead. And it seems like my opponent does not have the blood moon. You're gonna play in that? Uh, I don't know. I haven't even looked into it. Don't know when it is. I don't know what the event is. Looks like. So if they have a bolt, they can kill my dryad, but it's kind of fine. Yeah, this is a good card. The only issue that I have is that I'm gonna have to copy my opponent's Blood Crypt, which I'm not excited about. So we're gonna play this out, but we don't have to crack it just yet. Okay, I guess we're gonna crack it now. After I forced my opponent to use their card. It's bad if they have a... Nice. Very nice. Okay, so we have a couple of options here. Option number one is to YOLO and bounce this turn timber and replay it. Again, like the interaction that I saw earlier. Or we also have access to the safer line which is bounce the blood crypt and replay it as a field of the dead. So I think I'm gonna go for that line. Because if we whiff, if we whiff off of this uh, turn timber, we're actually in kind of bad shape. So I'm gonna go for the coward line which is to make sure we have a bunch of zombies and then we just kill my opponent. Play the fun line, yeah, I guess. 
Why is turn two in the deck if you're not going to cast it, coward? Yo, yo, this is getting aggressive. <laughs> so, should I choose a line that 100% wins the game? Literally, because my opponent has zero ways in their deck to play around it. So we straight up win. Or, or, we can find the line. We can find the line that maybe wins or maybe I lose. Hmm. Close, close decisions. Love this hand. Not a coward if it's the correct play. <laughs> I mean, still arguably could be a coward. But... Uh oh. Um. So this is probably Belcher. So if I play Stacy here, that means I don't get to Asusa on three. If I Stacy here. I think I'm supposed to Stacy here, actually. Because it doesn't change the turn that I tighten. So it is Belcher. So here comes the Blood Moon, and we can't beat this. This matchup is night unwinnable, by the way. If your opponent does something like even remotely close to their game plan, like if they enact their game plan, we can't realistically win. Uh, it looks like they're missing land drops, uh, but we're also not able to find our, our green sources. So even if they're missing land drops, it just doesn't matter at all. Okay, there we go. I believe you. I believe you. I don't need to see it. Okay. Uh, this, this, and uh, this. Is this a hand? Kind of isn't. Is this a hand? Sure. Okay, so if we find a bounce land and my opponent doesn't blood with me on turn two, we actually have a shot. Is Samuel good at the moment? Uh, I mean, it's always kind of good. Bounce land, bounce land, bounce land. All right, we can still draw a bounce land. Let's go. Bounce land. Any bounce land. Any bounce. Yes. Yes. Yes, chat. Yes. Yes. Damn it.
We're gonna die on turn four anyway. It's gonna be really sad, but uh, I guess I can go squatter them. So never mind. So we attack. Yes. Um, field go squatter. So this is six damage. Six damage this turn, they go down to 14. Then we go squatter the red source, probably. Um, and I think we go squatter them right now, actually. Um, yeah, let's do that. So this place around Blood Moon the best because it actually this place around Blood Moon the best because it makes it so my opponent can't really punish me with Blood Moon because we are still we're still setting up we're not setting up lethal here we can only swing for twelve. Um, because we can get a zombie and then we haste the zombie, obviously. So we can set up lethal this turn, but um, even if even if they blood moon, I mean, I guess if they blood moon, we couldn't set up lethal anyway. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, this place around blood moon best. Okay, um, on the draw. No, I guess this is fine. Maybe I should have Power Blood Command in my deck. Okay, I mean this hand beats uh, a non-early Blood Moon draw probably, or it has a shot at beating it at least. Uh, but this hand cannot beat turn to Blood Moon. But this hand allows me to get lucky, right? Which is not something I can say for every single hand. So if they have like ritual into into moon, we just lose, but whatever. Keep following your lead on decks and you keep putting stupid expensive cards in. What what's with the Limvala? <laughs> uh Limvala is for the Heliod deck for the Heliod matchup specifically. Yep. Alright. So we just lose or not. Okay. Interesting. Talk to me deck. So this is second lander, we still have one. Now we have two. Blue, blue, transmute. I think we might be able to tighten here. Blue, blue, bounce, transmute. Some respect. <clears throat> so I guess that we have to grace her here. I have to make sure, because we're going to have to use the Vesuva. I think this is just lethal. So, play Gracer. Unfortunately, we're gonna go down to one land. So, we're not gonna be able to trigger Valakit. Oh, we can't trigger Valakit, that sucks. Can't trigger Valakit. Can we double Titan? Wait a second, so six, no, we're one short of double, tit double Titan in. Wow, that's a very early concession. 
I, I couldn't actually kill them. So here we're going to have 8 mana, down to 2, we packed, we cast Titan. Uh, we can't chain Titans. So we can't get Tolera West plus a Bounce Land. And we would be forced to get a, a Battlement. Uh, we, would, we would be forced to get a Vesuva to copy these Battlements here. Um, so we wouldn't be able to trigger uh, to trigger Valakut anyway. So I would have needed to play around Blood Moon here. Yeah, that was an early concession from my opponent. They were not dead. <laughs> they were definitely not dead. But I guess they, they wanted to be the only turn two deck. So they just, if I can't win on turn two, you can't either. And they just conceded. I... Yeah, I, I transmit a free. Uh, what did I lose against? I lost to the blue-green Titan control deck. Because I played like a complete idiot. Could have won game one pretty easily if I hadn't thrown. Come on, Staffs, you know how this works. Turn three dryad. Probably not enough. This seems better to me. So we're keeping this. Ten minute bottom bog. Maybe I should have bottomed the grazer actually. Yeah, I guess I should have bought the Gracer. Shit. This is probably the worst start that we can see on the other side of the battlefield. Because it means that it's either the Heliod deck or the, <laughs> or the Ponza deck, both of which are terrible matchups for us. Okay, so it's the Helio deck. This being a league, I'm gonna pack it in if my opponent makes an infinite life combo. If this were a competitive event, I would not. Like if this were a prelim or a, you know, like a, a challenge or whatever, I would actually make them play it out. But okay, so my opponent has wow, pay four mana for my Arbor Elf. Feels bad, man. Oh, please let me untap. Please let me untap. Please let me untap and put, my, put that forest on the top of my opponent's deck. Please let me untap. Please let me untap. Let there, let there be justice. Let there be justice. Let me untap, please. <laughs> let me untap, please. Please, 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 please. I put this making a lot of mana though. Probably not gonna matter. Follow this command was an EE mainboard. Uh, I don't think it would have changed too much, really. Okay. Put in sacking some lands. Justice on this stream, yeah. You thinking of playing the NRG event this weekend? Usually I dis I reserve weekends to do like, you know, real life stuff. So probably I won't, but maybe, I don't know. Most likely not. 
Ballista for two. Sure, I can work with that. So we're definitely putting these on top of the deck. I guess I'm searching for... A, I'm just searching for a Titan anyway, right? So I'm going to start for a creature card. Lands? Who needs lands? Um... I guess I do want to attack with... No. No, I don't want to attack. It's just block with the Ranger. How the hell do you get to do real life stuff during the runner? I mean, I'm not... What I mean by real life stuff, it's just like... We... Like, my wife and I cook. We do grocery shopping. Um, that kind of stuff. Also, my opponent showed me that they drew another forest. So I know one of their cards in hand is a forest because they play mismatched ones. I think I'm double blocking here. Like my opponent already played their land, so like, if they want to play, if they want to trade a ballistic counter and the ranger captain for like, this is fine with me. Like I don't need the second dryad. In fact, this makes it less likely for my opponent to kill me on a single swoop. Any land. And enters untapped. Any land that it, that's the best one. Boom. Boom. Boom, I said. Um so we have to put this first, that one. And that one dies. That one and that one, yeah. All right, Heliod. This members, thank you very much. Um, now what? Explosives. And Kosilek. So the, bringing in Kosolek is kind of a, like a thought experiment, I guess it's a way that I would put it. Um, what the Kosolek does is basically it gives me a pseudo out to infinite life in that I, I can actually just like annihilator my opponent's board. And then if I can kill my own Kosolek thanks to Dryad plus, um, plus Valakut, then I I never mill. Why did I cut Vestige? Because the whole premise for this deck is that we don't splash for anything. Why aren't we hasting? Because hasting represents one, represents one less Valaka trigger. Right? And I'd rather make sure my opponent has no board. Hasting would have required me to find another land. I guess I could have attacked and get double Valakut, so maybe Hasting was better. We are playing into Path to Exile, though. Which probably my opponent doesn't have main board. So we can shave a couple of Explorers. Probably shave one prime time. Actually, rather shave it packed. And shave Stacy.
This deck is complicated. Uh, not... I mean, it's definitely more complicated than the average modern deck, right? Like, if you compare this deck to Boggles, or you compare this deck to, like, Tron, yeah, this this deck is, is complicated, but... Ghostly like Bidding Infinite Life is why it's up to this channel. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're very welcome, Stabs. You're very welcome. It is kind of cute, right? Again, it's a thought experiment. I don't know if in practice it's actually going to work. I am not 100% sure that it's going to work in practice, but in theory, in theory at least, it should do what I want it to do. Tron play not a pilot. Uh, I mean, you you would still be surprised at at the amount of times that I have seen Tron players punt a game against me. Like, yeah, it's it's definitely a much easier deck to play than this one, but like you still have to think about things. And there's there's the way that I like to put it, um, or at least the way that I think about it is. If you have a good amulet player and you have a bad amulet player, the bad amulet player is gonna play the deck at like, I don't know, like 30% of its capability, while the good amulet player is gonna play it at 90% of its capability, right? Like, there's gonna be like a pretty, pretty large thresh uh, threshold, right, between of difference between the good and the bad amulet player. Um, when we move on to a deck like Tron, for example, that threshold is a lot smaller. So, uh, for example, a good Tron player is going to play the deck at like 90% and a bad Tron player is going to play the deck at like 75%, you know? Uh, okay, so I think that we're going to Azusa here because I think it's very important for us to hold up this member. And Dryad doesn't let us hold up this member. But Bounce Land is one of the better draws that we could have had there. Oh, that's a good one, Laplacian. That's a good one. Um, so let's remember right here. I guess we get owned by... Um, I guess we get owned by, like, Veil of Summer, but there's no way my opponent's playing Veil of Summer. Uh, but I'm doing this in response, because, like, here... Here, the, the combo, because they have the Conclave Mentor, not only represents infinite life, but also represents infinite damage, because they can make both of their dudes infinitely large. So I actually have to this member in response to the Heliod. If they have another Spike Feeder, then we can just call my opponent a Lux Sack and move on with our lives. Oh, sure, okay. My opponent was indeed a Lux Sack, good to know. Uh, yeah, let's try this again. Once I went to FNM to just trade cards so he didn't take my deck and then decided to play anyways and made Lane and me his strong deck and I won easy. Yeah, that sounds about right. Tron is not the most skill intensive deck, if you ask me. Uh, sure, let's keep this hand. So we have two Gracers, one Scout, so I guess it's correct for us to name Beast here on this cavern. I'm not casting anything, so <laughs> I don't know why. That was just that was just a thing that happened. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What name with cavern beast? Uh, because naming beast allows me to play a gracer if I top deck it. Mm 
there are only two cards that I can cast off of this cavern, right? Where the naming matters, which are Stacy or um, or Gracer. And I right now in my deck configuration, I have two Gracers, one Stacy, so I went with that. There's Heliod. This is awkward, but we have to do it. Oh no, Stacy is um, Sakura Tribe Scout. It's the cute way. It's the cute way of naming Sakura Tribe Scout. So next turn we can explode some three plus hold up this member. We're playing like cowards here, but I think it's correct for us to play like cowards. I have company. Yeah. Mm. This is low key a good thing for us. Because now we can dismember the Heliod. What do you mean? Oh, they can sack both things to save Heliod? Yeah, yeah, but they sack both things if they do that, right? Like, we still trade a two for one there. So it's not the worst. So I guess we play explosives for zero to potentially blow up the ballista and we play dryad here. Play giant and we play explosives for zero. Uh, we can beat infinite life. Collaborate aggressive Gracie, you know, you gotta be consistent. Yeah, that's possible. Choke. So if we find Valakut, we might be able to win here. Uh, 
But it feels like we naturally have to find the Valakut here. Because now they can put a counter on the Ballista and they can win an instant speed, so... I mean, that would be pretty good. Yeah, Amulet also wins. That's a good point. That's a good point. Amulet also wins. Amulet or Valakut? Dismember. So I guess I have to kill this right now. And now Amulet, not that great of a draw anymore. But I'm still, it, like it's still okay, so I'm gonna continue to hold on to these explosives. One, two, three, four, five, six. My opponent can force me to tap out entirely. 69 life, nice. Yeah, the issue with a card like Choke is the fact that Like, my opponent is basically saying, I will not... I will not answer your Dryad, right? They were tanking as if 15, 69 was the correct number. Maybe it was. Also, they missed out on a, on a couple of counters. Conclave Mentor. Now Spike Feeder is actually lethal. Land is also lethal. So this taps me out completely, which kind of sucks. And I suspect they have the second Ballista in hand. Okay, Valakut, and we have a shot. Valakut of the top, chat. Let's go. Valakut. You're a little bit too late. Um, I'm gonna play this untap though, cause makes Amulet a good draw. And we can start making Sombos. So if they have second, uh, oh, oh shit. Okay, so this makes their dude infinitely large. Okay. Uh, that matchup is just miserable for us, as, as you just saw there. Uh, that league was not bad though. We lost to me being an idiot, and we lost to like a terrible, terrible matchup. And even we set our, we put ourselves in situations where we actually had multiple outs to to get out of that. Like if we if we have found the Valakut there, or we have found like um, an amulet, we actually were in that game, which is kind of cool. Um, 
Not too much else to say. Not too much else to say though. But we're going to we're gonna play another one. So stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.